Yo, what is going on guys? It's Philly, and welcome to my first Fire Emblem Three Houses unit review. This video will be focusing on who I think is one of the most underrated characters in all of Three Houses, Shamir. Now before we go ahead and talk about Shamir, I just wanted to mention that while some of my opinions in this video will apply to all difficulty levels, this series will be solely focused on how units perform in maddening mode on a new game file. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the review. So the first thing you're going to notice about Shamir is her base stats. If you recruit her as early as possible while playing Golden Deer or Blue Lions, you can actually get her as a level 11 sniper during chapter 6. Yep, you heard that right, level 11 sniper. It doesn't make any sense based on the game's requirement for being level 20 before you can get into the sniper class, but Shamir is one of two units that just doesn't care about the level 20 advanced class requirement. That being said, she comes with some amazing base stats due to the fact that she's in an advanced class. Look at her 18 strength, 21 dex, and 17 luck. Most units in your army at this point are not going to be able to even come close to matching those. Now her bases may be incredible, but her growths, eh, they're just okay. Highlights being 75 dex and 65 luck. Uh, that combination is actually the highest in the game, which means that she is going to become a very reliable crit um, character later on in the game. We'll get more into that later. Her strength is okay at 45, but her speed being at 40, kind of low, and honestly the rest of her stats aren't that great. But again, we'll talk about these later. For skill levels, she joins with C pluses in Lance, A in Bows, and D in Authority. A in Bows? That's insane, right? <laughs> uh, to actually have a character with A rank in anything at Chapter 6 is quite incredible. And uh, it's, it's just going to allow her to be more accurate with the higher bow prowess. Um, as well as just have access to the higher rank bows immediately. Uh, she does have boons in Lance and Bow as to be expected. And she does have a Bane in Faith. There's no hidden talents to speak of here. But honestly, you don't need them. Um, spell list. I mean, I wouldn't really recommend Shamir being a mage. Or any sort of magical build um, just due to the base stats and growth rates that you can see on your screen right now um, but if you wanted to she has kind of the wind spells plus Sagitte um, and she does get physic which is kind of cool her personal ability is survival instinct which gives you a plus four boost to strength magic dex and speed for one turn uh, when Shamir defeats an enemy on player phase so it's kind of not the best personal in the world but if you combine it with a dancer it can actually get pretty good because she can get that boost you can dance for her and then she can attack again with the boosted stats um, as far as learned abilities she pretty much only gets battalion desperation and that's not going to be useful just considering the fact that she kind of does have low speed she's not going to be doubling things very often anyway so battalion desperation isn't really going to be kicking in uh, as for learned combat arts uh not really anything special there either, but she does get Monster Blast, which can have some utility, obviously. Um, and one last thing to mention is that she does have a bond support with Catherine, or a special support, whatever you want to call it. Um, which means that if you support her with Catherine, and they attack near each other, do a linked attack with each other, um, they can get a boost to their might, which is pretty good. Strengths for Shamir. Well, where do we start? There's so many to go over. Uh, I think the biggest one is that, again, if you're playing Blue Lions or Golden Deer, you can actually recruit her in Chapter 6. Now, unfortunately, if you're playing Silver Snow, you can't get her until Chapter 12. And if you're playing Crimson Flower, you can't get her at all. So that is kind of the downside to that. But um, for the early game, we're just going to be focusing on Blue Lion and Golden Deer. And in order to recruit her that early in Chapter 6, uh, your Byleth needs to be level 15. You can actually lower this threshold by having support with uh, Shamir and Byleth. And so if you have a C plus support between the two, uh, you only have to be level 9 with Byleth to recruit Shamir. And if your Byleth is not level 9 by chapter 6, you've probably just been completely ignoring training her for him. Um, so, once you get her in chapter 6, uh, as I mentioned earlier, she has insanely high base stats. That strength is through the roof, that dex is through the roof, that luck, same thing. So, uh, 
she's just going to be innately more powerful than most of the units in your army. But don't forget, she's in the sniper class. And that means that if you spend a little bit of time grinding auxiliary battles in the first month just before chapter 6, you can actually have her master Hunter's Volley. If you want, you can also have her master hit plus 20, uh, which will make Hunter's Volley more accurate. Yep. So you can have Hunter's Volley, 2-4 range, automatic brave effect in chapter 6. Now combine this with her 18 base strength. And that means that she's pretty much going to be able to one round every single unit in Chapter 6. And uh, honestly, probably most of them for the entire early game. Uh, it pretty much makes Shamir your most reliable player phase unit early game if you're a recruiter. So definitely want to think about that. Um, one other thing I'd like to mention, it's just like a random little thing, is that if you give Shamir the Lance of Ruin... In chapter 6, she can actually one-shot the Death Knight using that combined with Night Kneeler. Um, just a little random thing. <laughs> bit, a bit of information there for you. Uh, mid to late game, Hunter's Volley, she's pretty much still going to be one-shotting most enemies, at least in the mid game. Late game, her strength can sort of fall off, and she probably won't be able to one-round armored units or some of the other units that have insanely high HP. But... Um, Luckily, Shabir is... she's built to counteract this. Um, as I said earlier, she has the highest deck, uh, dex and luck stats um, combined in the game. So that means that her natural crit rate is going to be really high. If you give her a critical ring and a battalion that also boosts her crit, and forge her a killer bow plus, you could pretty much have a 100% or close crit rate uh, with Hunter's Volley on most enemies. Now. I really can't think of any enemies aside from monsters that can take a double crit from Shamir. <laughs> it's it's just not going to happen. Uh, I think in my last playthrough, I was just pretty much using that strategy to one-shot bosses pretty much throughout the entire late game. Uh, it's, it's really good. Also, another thing to mention, yeah, her strength does kind of fall off a little bit, but she is one of the two units in the game, again, that doesn't really have that hard of a time reaching S plus in her preferred weapon, which is bows in this case. Um, if you're only playing a new game file, pretty much the only way you're reaching S plus is on Shamir or Catherine. Um, so she can actually have two bow fares if her strength does fall off and you need that five extra damage, which of course does translate to 10 extra damage um, if you're using Hunter's Volley. Now weaknesses, you saw it in her stats, it's the mediocre speed and the terrible defensive stats. But luckily, uh, she really doesn't need these. As I said, Hunter's Volley is going to be used to double everything. And she's a sniper, she's not really going to be taking damage on enemy phase. She shouldn't be getting attacked by more than one enemy. Uh, another weakness is she doesn't really have a crest. So um, no real compatible relic weapons and just the the extra effects of whatever a crest would give her um, she doesn't have that I would say a lack of versatility might be another one as honestly she's pretty much only good in the sniper or maybe the bow knight class um, maybe you could put her in wyvern lord but <laughs> I, it, there's not a lot of variation there with Shamir so uh, she might be less fun for you if you're using her in multiple playthroughs. And as I said earlier, um, not available until chapter 12 in the Silver Snow Route, and not available at all in Crimson Flower. So you gotta think about that. You can only use Shamir um, to her fullest potential, basically, in two out of the four routes in this game. So as I alluded to earlier, Sniper is definitely her best class. Hunter's Volley defines this character, and... The game sort of tells you that she is meant to be a sniper, and this is one of the cases where the cannon class is 100% the best class. Shamir is built to be a sniper in this game. Now, if you want to try something else, Bow Knight is obviously another option. She does come with uh, C plus and lances, so you pretty much just have to raise her riding rank and you can get her into Bow Knight. Her high dex does mean that even attacking at the longer range of the Bow Knight, uh, she might have decent hit rates. But that being said, with her low speed, 
she's probably not going to be double any doubling anything because you obviously can't use Hunter's Volley in the Bonite class. Now, if you want to try something really out there, um, you can always go with the like super meta option and try and turn her into a Wyvern Lord or a Falcon Knight. Um, she doesn't have a Bane and Axes or Flying, so it might not be too hard to get her up there. But I've never tried it because Shamir Sniper is just too good to pass up on. Shamir joins early on in the blue lines of Golden Deer Roads, and immediately becomes your army's most reliable player phase unit. Her high base strength and dex, coupled with the hit plus 20 skill and Hunter's Volley Combat Art, allow her to quickly and safely eliminate enemies from a long range. Her strength may fall off late game due to a mediocre 45% growth, but she'll still be able to one round almost any unit using Hunter's Volley and a Killer Bow Plus. Unfortunately, low speed and defensive stats means that Shamir won't be seeing a lot of activity on the enemy phase. However, this lack of productivity on enemy phase is more than made up for with her incredible player phase potential. In my opinion, Shamir is not just the best sniper in the game, but she's also one of the best units in the game, period. Final verdict? 9 out of 10 authority stars? She is only outclassed by the absolute best units in the game. If you haven't tried Shamir, I would definitely recommend you do so. Well, that's it for this time. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have another 3 houses unit that you'd like me to do a review on, please let me know in the comments below. See you guys in the next video. Peace.